During their annual shareholders meeting on September 22nd, Elon Musk told us more about Full Self Driving 2.0. It revealed a lot about the future of autonomous driving, but even more about Tesla as a company. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This channel is dedicated to finding out whether I really do know it all or not. If you enjoy the video, definitely make sure you hit the thumbs up button and you subscribe for more. And definitely subscribe because we got a 500 subscriber giveaway coming up soon. As Elon Musk revealed more and more about Tesla's full self-driving 2.0, which is coming out, I guess, rather soon, I was fascinated by some of the revelations he made yesterday. This is what his speech told me about full self-driving and about Tesla as a company as a whole. First, let's talk about the software. Elon Musk talked about a plateau, and I think that customers have sort of noticed this too, but there was a, um, you know, if you talked like the amount of full self-driving, like the autonomy of the car, it was going like this for a period of time, and then it's really, really leveled off in terms of improvement level with full self-driving 1. Point whatever is the current version of it right now. So a plateau is a bad thing in terms of software or anything else, right? You can't get to the maximum that you're looking for. You're stuck. Uh, and if you look at some of the episodes I've done about full self-driving and neural networks and so forth, you can get more details about why you would get stuck at what's called a local maximum. In fact, I think Elon Musk actually specifically said a local maximum as opposed to getting to the maximum. So uh, he definitely understands AI and terminology and neural networks and so forth from the inside out clearly. So how do you get around this plateau? The traditional way to do it, the more risk averse way to do it, the more, you know, the whatever, <laughs> the way that most people would do it would be to patch and patch and patch and patch. So you have a piece of software that's working well enough, and then you just keep, you know, fixing things and adding things on forever. I think, uh, <laughs> not to put too fine a point on it, but Microsoft products often are that way. I think there's a tendency for Apple products to be that way too. So especially bigger companies tend to just be like, this core software is good enough. We're just going to keep sticking things on it and we're going to keep patching the little stuff that's not working. That leads to all kinds of problems. It leads to security problems. In the case of full self-driving, it leads to obviously not exceptional performance. It leads to performance that gets to a certain level and just can't go any further. So the advantage of this, of course, is it's much, much less risky in the short term, but it can be a ton more work in the long term. And also it can just literally stop you from ever getting to the state that you want to be in. What's the other option? <laughs> start over again. So clean slate, I think he said something like white paper, but you know, basically just start with a new screen, start the whole thing over again, rethink the whole process, and version 2.0 as opposed to just a kind of evolutionary thing is actually a revolutionary piece of software. It's all new. This is much, much more risky, of course. You could start over again and end up getting nowhere, right? You could end up getting something that doesn't work at all, it's broken, it's a failure. So that's a huge risk, but the reward is huge because if it works right, you've suddenly gotten rid of all this legacy crap that you were dealing with and you're able to start over again and you're used, able to use the um, lessons that you've learned from the last time around to make a better piece of software. So you've got a clean start. It's not messy software anymore. It's a chance to fix what was broken before. It's a chance to like reimagine it and think about it in a new way and hopefully learn the lessons that you needed to learn from the first go round. So these are all huge, important things. There wasn't a ton on new features, but what Elon Musk revealed about the new features was fascinating. He talked about the kind of traditional thing, which was you take a video and you break it down into individual frames. So let's say 15 a second or 30 a second or something. And then the computer looks at those frames or you learn or you train off of that stuff. And oftentimes I think he was saying like a lot of this had to be hand labeled by human beings. Huge problems, very, very slow, very taxing, very intensive in terms of cost and human endeavor. And he said with version 2.0, full self-driving 2.0, they've now got full on autonomous video labeling, which means that it's labeling something like if, it's, if it sees a stop sign, 
it can label that stop sign throughout the video sequence, which might be multiple seconds, right? It might be 10 or 15 seconds that that's in view. And also don't forget, we're not just talking about like what we see, which is in front of us, but this is a full 360. So it's taking a full 360 degree view around itself and it's able to label everything that's in that and maintain that. So it's like that thing, like, you know, when a baby gets to a part, point when they can actually begin to tell that an object that has disappeared temporarily is still there, right? So <laughs> the whole peekaboo thing doesn't work anymore because they're like, yeah, your face is still there. So there's a period of time when a baby, like, you do this and then you go like that and they're like, oh, <laughs> you, you just reappeared. So that's kind of where we're getting, it sounds like, with this autonomous driving software is that it's able to go like, oh, that's still a stop sign. Oh, that's still a stop sign. Oh, that's still a stop sign, right? Ooh, a piece of candy. Ooh, a piece of candy. Ooh, a piece of candy. So that's amazing advancement and it's very new. And if it's really autonomously labeling and maintaining the persistence of memory throughout all of that video sequencing, that's really, really cool stuff. So just that little insight into Full Self Driving 2.0 means a massive difference in its ability level. So suddenly I'm, you know, before I was, if you look at my video, I was like, well, maybe 2.0 is going to work. Maybe it's going to be better. Maybe we'll solve Full Self Driving. But that gives me, you know, I'm suddenly like way more optimistic that Full Self Driving is actually going to happen now. As far as performance is concerned, from what, again, from what Elon Musk said, apparently, you know, this labeling plus a lot of other aspects of the software is finally breaking through the plateau. So now what we're getting is we were like this for a long time and with this new software, it's like ka -chink, and it's gone way up again. So Elon Musk is highly optimistic about performance and about the ability to hit full self-driving, like full autonomous driving very soon. If you check out my episode up here, I did one about why they're not letting people purchase their leased cars back again. And I'm convinced that one of the main reasons why is because they they think that they've got full self-driving licked or really, really close to licked. And they want the cars back for their robo-taxi fleet after three years. So mark my words about that. <laughs> I think that's definitely going to happen. Of course, on the other hand, Elon Musk is always a very optimistic guy, so it's possible he's a little, you know, out there in front. But he's optimistic, so sometimes the timeline doesn't work out but he's pretty much always dead on about what he says is going to happen. So I'm thinking at this point, probably full autonomy is, is coming. That's amazing. So the second half of this is what does this say about Tesla as a company? Obviously, they're a high risk, high reward company. Uh, no legacy automaker. I can't even think of very many established companies, certainly not as big as Tesla, would be willing to take a chance like this. This is a huge part of the package of them, right? They've got their hardware, but then they've got their software. And so that's a lot of what they sell is their software. I would say they're still thinking very much like a startup company, not an established multi-billion dollar company. And I think that's fantastic. I'm all for it. But most companies, when they get that big, get real stodgy. The CEO become a, becomes a numbers guy and they stop innovating, right? They become a company, not a startup anymore. So what does that mean? It means that they don't get bogged down in good enough. They change what's needed when it's needed. Again, like a startup company that has no customers yet, they just have some venture capital and they're working hard to make a really cool product that nobody knows about yet. But Tesla already has a product that everybody knows about, but they're still thinking like that. And that's super cool that they're doing that. As has been shown in other areas, for example, the Model 3 ramp up that almost killed the whole company, and I think it almost killed Elon Musk as well. Tesla is willing to bet the company on new things rather than to limp along with what works okay today. They're going to reap huge rewards. They're not going to have spaghetti code. They're not going to have legacy issues. They're going to have a clean slate to start with. They're going to have a new way of thinking about the software. This is huge, but it took a massive risk and it's taken several years to get there. So not only is full self-driving going to work better, the code itself is going to be easier to maintain and upgrade in the future. And that's that's also huge, right? <laughs> and who knows, maybe they'll throw all this out too in a couple of years and they'll have full self-driving 3.0, which will be yet another entirely new piece of software from what they've learned before. You never know. But it's amazing that they're willing to do this, even this at this point. It's, a, it's pretty cool stuff. In other words, what Musk told us is that Tesla is not only ahead of the competition, they're willing to risk everything to continue to improve even when they're already ahead. Thus, they're going to stay leaps and bounds ahead of everybody in the coming years. You can mark my words, this attitude is rare and it makes a huge difference. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more, of course. And definitely make sure you ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.